In this video, I'll show you how you can deploy a container or Docker image to AWS ECS. Now let's get going. Just log into your AWS console and then go to Amazon Elastic Container Service. Now click on Get Started or Clusters here on the left hand side. A cluster is simply a logical grouping of services or standalone tasks and it allows for shared capacity and common configurations. I currently have no clusters, so there's nothing to display here. Now click on Create Cluster, which will open the Create Cluster page. Give your cluster a name. Mine is going to be Demo Cluster. Under Networking, please select a VPC. I'm going to go with the default VPC, which you get by default. But you can choose any VPC that you have by selecting it here. Or you can create a new VPC and then link it here. Just make sure that the VPC you choose is inbound rules that allow traffic into the port or ports you want in the container that you're going to deploy. I am using the default VPC and as such, the default VPC security group, which is this one, will also be applied. So just select it. Once it's open, just go to inbound rules and then click on edit inbound rules. The container that I'm deploying, that is Apache HTTP, requires port 80. So even though here I've got a security group rule that allows all traffic, you still need to specify an inbound rule that allows traffic from port 80. So just click on add rule, and then under type, click on this drop down, and then select HTTP. And then here, under source, just allow all IP address, and then click on save rules. As you can see, our inbound security rules were modified successfully. And we now have a rule to allow HTTP traffic on port 80. Now let's go back to Amazon ECS. Please also note that the name of the cluster has also been set as the name of the default namespace. You can change this here if you don't want this name. Under infrastructure, you see that the cluster is automatically configured for AWS Fargate, which is serverless with two capacity providers, that is Fargate and Fargate Spot capacity providers. This is enough for our purposes, so I will not be selecting Amazon EC2 instances or the external instances using ECS anyway. Under monitoring, you can turn on container insights, which is off by default as there's a cost associated with it. You can also apply tags to your cluster, and these help you to identify and organize your clusters. I'll just be going with the default tags that are already provided. Now click on Create to create the cluster. This process takes a bit of time to create the cluster. Once the creation is complete, you'll get a confirmation message that the cluster was created successfully, and your cluster will be listed here under Clusters. Before we continue, if you enjoy videos like this, it would mean a lot to me if you hit the like button and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. It's totally free, it takes you a split second, and as a thank you for that, let's continue. Now you've got a cluster, the next thing you have to create is a task definition. A task definition is essentially a blueprint of how your container should launch. It contains details such as how much memory, CPU your container should have, and other stuff such as what image it should use and what ports need to be opened, etc. You use a task definition to then create a task. Click on task definitions on the left hand side, which will then open the task definitions console. Once it's open, click on create new task definition to create a new task definition. Put in the task definition family. Mine is Apache HTTPD, as this is going to be a task to launch the Apache HTTP server. On the container section, give the container a name. This is an HTTP container, so I'll call it HTTP. On the image URI, put in the repository URL, forward slash, and then image and tag. If your image is on Docker app, you can just put in the name of the image and tag. So for Apache HTTP, the image URI will be HTTPD latest. You can see here under port mappings that the container port is 80, which is why we added that inbound rule on the security group. 
Also take note to rename the port name without capital letters as capital letters will cause errors when you try to create the task definition. You can add environment variables or environment files. You can also set a health check for your container. I highly recommend setting up a health check in production, but we're not going to be doing this in this demo. Click on next to continue, which will move you to step two, where you can configure the environment, storage, monitoring, and tags. On the app environment, a WS Fargate will be pre-selected. If you want to add EC2 instances, just click on the dropdown and select them. I am good with only Fargate, so I will not be selecting the EC2 instances. On the operating system or architecture, just select the operating system that you want. But just make sure to select the operating system that aligns with the image that you put in step one. This is a demonstration, so I'm going to downgrade the CPU to 0.5 vCPU. I'm also going to downgrade the memory from three gigabytes to two gigabytes. I'm not going to configure anything on the container size. On the task row, select the row that you want to use to allow containers in the task to make API requests to AWS services. I don't want the containers in this task to make API calls to AWS services, so I'll select none. If you want a role though, you'll have to first create it in Identity Access Management Console and then link it here. On the task execution row, pick a role if one already exists, otherwise click on the drop down and select create new role. I already have a role, but I'm gonna click on the drop down and select create new role so that you can see that AWS will create a role for you. The difference between the task row and the task execution row is that the task row is for containers and the task execution row is for container agents. I'm not going to change anything on storage, which is where you can add ephemeral storage. I will also leave the defaults on monitoring and logging, and I'll not be adding any tags except keeping the one that is provided by default. Now click on next, which will take you to step three, where you can review and create. Just check if everything is okay, and if everything looks good, just scroll down and then click on create to create the task definition. This doesn't take time, and you'll quickly get a confirmation that the task definition was successfully created, and you can now use this task definition to deploy a service or run a task. This is what we're going to do next, and you can use the deploy options at the top right hand corner to deploy a service or deploy a task. Alternatively, you can go to clusters and then select the cluster that you want. And under here, you can deploy a service or a task. When you want to run one instance of a task definition, use the tasks option. And when you want to run and maintain a specified number of instances of a task definition simultaneously in an Amazon ECS cluster, use a service. In a service, if one of your tasks fails or stops, the Amazon ECS service scheduler launches another instance of your task definition to replace it. This helps to maintain your desired number of tasks in the service. You can also optionally run your service behind a load balancer. The load balancer will distribute traffic across the tasks that are associated and running in the service. In this demo, however, I'm going to choose a task. In the next video, I'll show you how to create and run an Amazon ECS service. So select the task tab and then click on run new task. This will open the run task page where you can choose the cluster to run the task on. I only have one cluster, so it is pre-selected. You can also adjust the compute configuration, but I'll be going with the defaults. On the deployment configuration, you see that the application type is task, but you also have another chance to change it to a service. On the task definition, you can also choose the family. I only have the Apache HTTPD family, so I'm gonna select it. As soon as you select the family, it will select the latest revision. Mine is two here. When you update a task definition, that will be considered a new revision, so your revision numbers here will go up. You can also specify the number of tasks to launch. One is enough for the demo, so I'll leave the desired tasks as one. You also have a chance to modify the networking, as well as do task overrides, 
as well as container overrides. You use the task overrides as well as the container overrides when you want to do something different to this particular task than what was specified in the task definition. I'm not going to make any overrides and I'm not going to add any tags. So I'll just click on create to create the task. This will create the task and should get a notification at the top here. Now, just wait until the last status has gone from provisioning to running. Click on refresh to refresh the status. And as you can see, the last status is now saying running, which is the same as this desired status. Once the status is now saying running, click on the task ID to open it up. Once it opens up under configuration, look for public IP address. This public IP is where our Apache HTTP service is running. And if we open it and it displays it works, it means that our service is running. So I'm just gonna click on open address. And as you can see, it displays it works. In this video, you learned how to deploy a container and run a task on Amazon ECS. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.